So, okay. And then uh, basically a quick introduction to everyone who uh, doesn't remember or hasn't been here before. Uh, if everyone wants to introduce themselves. Yeah, I'll start. Uh, yep. I'm Dennis Hayes. Uh, I've been doing woodworking for about uh, 40 years, and I'm trying not to do the same thing twice. You know, I guess that's my my uh, claim to fame. Uh, enjoy, love it, do it every day. You're in my shop right now, uh, and uh, introduce Mr. Rizzardi. Ed Rizzardi. I've been doing woodworking for 50 years. <laughs> But you're much older than I am. Hours of woodworking <laughs> as a passion, not a business. And I eat, drink, and sleep woodworking. Okay, so uh, I'm I'm big on research and look into you know if it's a tool or whatever it is. I I, I dive in and try to find the answer. <laughs> and I'm Joan Rivers. Been woodworking for about ten years, give or take. Been doing um, sculpture, mixed media sculpture. Um, I guess closer to 20. And uh, my background's in industrial design, fine art, art center, college design, and now I'm making cool stuff with these guys. So can't complain. Life is good. Life is good. Life is good. <laughs> Life is good. Yeah. And uh, oh, over here, you could, I'm Kevin Hayes over here, just uh, hiding in the corner. You know. Yeah, we have to get a wide angle camera one day. Yeah. I almost got one of those. But, uh, uh -huh. All right, uh, so, so today's uh, subject, is, like I uh, had on the thing, is drills and uh, drill presses and however far we could get into it. And, you know, a lot of people think that you can't really talk for more than like five minutes about the subject, but uh, well, we, we talk for days. Yeah, I talk for days and it's actually all really useful information and, uh, you know, pretty, uh, pretty good stuff. So, uh, Okay, and uh, so Dennis here will give a bit intro on this. So, so Kevin asked, he said, "Hey, let's let's do something on on uh, uh, drills and drill bits." So I called up Ed and I said, "Hey, look, look, how about I come over to your shop on uh, Friday, last Friday, and uh, we're going to do some videos on uh, drill bits and stuff." And I think Michelle, I think spurred by some of the questions that you had with Ed, so uh, I showed up. On uh, Friday at ten o'clock, and that's kind of the start of this. So, we'll uh, you, you will be uh, we we go to Ed's shop, kind of for an overview. Then we come back here, and I make some noise, and make a mess, and you'll see the contrast. I, mean, I think you're beginning to see the differences how we approach our job or how a woodworking, but how our goals are so similar. It's about the finished product. Whatever way you get there is just fine. Uh, so that said, uh, let's let's go ahead and do the video. All right. And we'll we'll talk and we'll talk through it as it as it goes. <laughs> Everything you ever wanted to know and a little bit more. You have to put it at the top because all the text is at the bottom. There. All right. So hold on a second, everybody. Let me. There you go. Okay. okay. And of course, Kevin. And in our normal disclaimer, our, these are our opinions based on actual use of the tools and the equipment that you see in these videos. Uh, we start an head shop for this overview. And it's just, <laughs> it blows me away. I show up to this. Okay, what we have here are some of the most common um, yep. drill bits. Pause right here. Can you pause? Yep. Okay. Um, first of all, this is. Um, some of the collection I have of fuller countersink drill bits. They've been best on the market. Um, they stay sharp for a long time. There's a number of knockoffs on the market now. There's a lot of bad reviews about them. Buy cheap, buy twice. I've had these for years, and fuller also offers a very reasonable price to send them in and sharpen them. Like each one of them sharpened like brand new for $4. 
what can you get for four dollars an hour? But these are the various sizes, and they equate to the standard screw sizes. So a number four, five, six, eight, ten, twelve, and fourteen probably cover ninety percent of the screw sizes, not lengths, but just the size of the uh, the screw. Now, real quick. There's only about 20 thousandths of an inch difference in between each one of these sizes. So, in other words, a number four, a number five is 20 thousandths bigger, a number six, 20, it goes, it goes up in increments of about 20, 25 thousandths. So, there's, um, I would say, 10% variation in the, in the size from one screw to another. Okay, and at the very end, we have what I call the, what did I call it, the uh, uh, postscript. That will get into a little bit more about these, and it's really good. So we're not going to talk about the the writing on the the, the little white part in these guys. We'll talk about that at the very end. It's kind of a, just a conversation that Ed and I had at the very end of the uh, uh, his. Uh, uh, thing. But I use I use these exclusively, like ninety nine percent for all the furniture that I built. Now I'm going to come over to what's called the fours method. Uh, these are again are just uh, some of the sizes that uh, they range from a quarter of an inch in diameter to all the way up to two and a half, three inches. And I just put out a, a, a mixture of some of them. These are made by a company called Bormax. They're made in Germany. Again, top of the line. Uh, they, they'll cut or drill a hole uh, that's flawless. I mean, it's so precise and there's no tear out or anything. There's a number of these on the market. There's uh, no offense, cheap uh, ones coming over from overseas. They're dull. They, they're not to spec. These things are perfect. If you want to bore a one inch hole, that one inch one there in the middle will do the job. Awesome. Oh, they range from the smallest one to $12 a piece up to. Um, Forty fifty dollars for the two inch on up, but um, they're they're made to last a lifetime, and uh, so the you can buy a whole set of these on Amazon or Grizzly for like thirty dollars and get um, thirty forty dollars get ten or twelve of them, and they're they're no good. You're throwing your money. Away. The next are the bread point drill bits. Now these are very similar to a standard twist drill, with the exception they have a point on the end of them, which is ideal for marking your piece of wood. And then uh, that little bread point will follow uh, right down in there. They cut uh, very clean as opposed to a standard twist drill that's used for metal. Sometimes they have a tendency to grab a little bit but this is what's the preferred um, drill bit for uh, drilling uh, at a depth of a hole. Uh, a set of about a hundred items on it from Harbor Freight or whatever it can still work. Uh, and the same story, same story. Drill motor. Okay, we'll talk about the drill motors themselves. First of all, um, my preference is Milwaukee, but any brand uh, that's a festival. Um, now we're back to bits. No, yeah, go ahead. Just, just, just still over here. Okay, those are speedboard bits. we are also drill a hole nowhere near as accurate as the uh, portion bit. There's a chart that we can probably uh, scan and if you want to download it uh, and stop it for a second. Uh, it, it talks all about uh, uh, drill bits and screws and speeds and speeds and all kinds of technical stuff. These are a few other accessories for drilling. One is a hole saw, which has been around for many, many years. Um, it, it does okay. Uh, uh, it's not nearly as good as a portion of it. The one, the fly cutter in the back is um, old school, been around for many years for cutting up each circle. Don't use it. Don't use it, dangerous. Uh, unless you, have, you need to use it in drill press, you need the clamp to work down. 
And is the whole thing spent like that? And it goes all the way through the wood. It's going to start spinning. It's, it's bad. Don't use it. It's bad. But Don't we wanted it. to show you um, uh, something. How many of those do you have? One. Oh, just okay. It's right there. I have one. It's still looks brand new. Yeah. And there's a reason. I used the, I used mine once, and I said, the heck with that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the little uh, device on the right side there is a uh, countersink, which has uh, been around for many, many years to drill a tapered hole in the wood to accommodate the wood screws. And just a quick overview of some now, of This is my collection of. <laughs> That was my collection of portion of it. Or there you uh, go. Counter, counter sinks, and that's only one box. Did you talk about the sweeps? <laughs> no, we'll, we'll talk about the oh, that okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So okay. I have them in a compartmental box. You see the numbers there, like number 10, number 12, number six. Those are the different sizes. Uh, so okay. Okay. Double hand drill motor. Pipes with screwdrivers and impact drivers. Talk a little bit about tools. Okay. Basically, there are about three different sizes of drill motors on the market. Uh, quarter inch, and that refers to the chuck size. That's the maximum size bit that you can put in a chuck. Uh, quarter inch, three eighths, and half inch. Uh, and 10 or 15 years ago, when they came out with uh, the uh, cordless drills, uh, they were ske somewhat skeptical to use. They weren't very powerful. Batteries didn't last very long. Well, like anything else, technology's changed. They've become like the go-to thing now. You can still buy a ported drill motor, a ported screwdriver if you want to, but um, if you want to invest in a cordless um, with the new lithium-ion batteries, they're, they're so powerful, it's unbelievable. Typical voltages are 9 to 18 volts. There's probably 50 different brands on the market. Um, uh oh, we do. Which brand? Basically, most of uh, have the same features. Um, um, they're they're all so about. Basically, yeah. if, you, if you want to buy a name brand, Makita, uh, Milwaukee, Porter Cable, um, Best Tool, they're, they're all good. They, they, the technology has gotten to the point where uh, it's like buying a BMW or Mercedes Benz. They're, they're very good. You know? um, if you want the lesser expensive brands, uh, maybe like a, a Ryobi uh, or even an off brand like Harbor Freight. You're going to invest money. You're going to buy their batteries. That's the other thing that's uh, tool specific. It's the batteries. They end up giving you cheap batteries. You're going to replace batteries. It's a nightmare. So buy good, buy one. <clears throat> if you have multiple tools that use the same battery packs. Exactly. Yeah, get in an ecosystem and stay with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you decide to buy Milwaukee, think about what you're doing. Stay with Milwaukee because the batteries. I've had some of my Milwaukee battery packs for like eight years now and use them all the time. And they just, the new lithium ion ones are fabulous compared to the um, NICAD ones. <clears throat> all right. Okay. Now we're going to run back to my shop. For drills, DeWalt's good. I've had my DeWalt drill for yeah, like DeWalt, 20 right. years. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, they're all, they're all good. And rigid, which rigid DeWalt. Uh, now owned by my, Milwaukee. The, Joe and I were talking about the DeWalt. The 18 volt DeWalt, which is a risk breaker. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You have to be careful, <laughs> but you'll see some of that. The reason I, you'll see some of this in, in this video, the, the modern versions of are much safer to use than the one that I gave to you. <laughs> you saw, was on my head. So, okay, continue. Now we're going to come to my shop. Okay. And there's notes on the bottom. Now, this is just all for demonstration purposes to show the valve, the, the power of the various drills. This is my test here. You hear that noise? That's the clutch. And I put in the medium screw without the pretty, without any big deal. No pilot hole. And now, not, you notice I just call small, medium, and large. We're not talking about screws. This is a big screw. 
It's in my little Matita, no part of the hill. With the best one. So, yeah, with the best one. And I'm adjusting the clutch for harder and harder. But then it, it tricked it. It said, no, I'm going to do it. So I switch over to my uh, Milwaukee with that load. It has a big screw, no counter <clears throat> No, no pilot. No and that was showing that I don't know what it was going to I just kind of walked away. Oh, no, it has a built in uh, clutch disengagement system. If it didn't have that, it would break your wrist with the pull. Spin around with it. Yeah. <laughs> If you're electric or you're electric. Yeah. Um, so it, it basically disengages. It says, no, I'm not going to do it. So now I get the impact driver. This really doesn't have any purpose in applying furniture building, but it shows you what these things can do. Yeah. Okay, use a pilot hole when installing screws and hardwood. It will split and screws will break. This is demonstration only. I had a lot of fun doing this. I never do this kind of stuff. That's a piece of walnut. Small screw, test tool, zip drag in. Clutch kicks in, adjust the clutch. One more time. <clears throat> no problem. Okay, it, it's in. Hmm. It right back up. Medium screw. We'll talk about these next next time here at once. The festival gives up the ghost really quick. The overload trips doesn't hurt the machine. And the 18 volt Milwaukee. Walk it right in. Ooh, it's hot. Good one. Yeah. <laughs> I do on Sundays for the fun. <laughs> now this is a very this what size is that? Number one. I don't I, I don't use these at all. Just so it spreads with bite. I'm putting a lot of pressure. If the clutch disengaged because it's too much for the machine. So I get the impact driver. It just, it just spins it right off. It just broke it, sheared it off without even thinking about it. Well, the screw broke before the Milwaukee impact. I actually used that drill. We're talking about cars earlier to, to take the 190 pound uh, foot pounds of torque off of the uh, a motor. Now, this is doing it correctly. Big counter tank. Again, you can see that's tough stuff. I'm putting a lot of pooch. That's a technical word for sure. <laughs> And we even use the, see if the festival will drive that the big screw in. Ten volts. And a trip. So now we do a little shuffle. You'll shuffle. Oh, oh, oh. oh no, okay. <laughs> you put the, the big guy in, 
This is a 12 volt uh, Milwaukee with the number three Phillips. Again, a lot of force is required. Okay, that, that should be, that's pretty much it. Now we're what, make, what makes an impact drill an impact drill? It hammers and, and it, it, instead of a continuous force, it, there's actually a, uh, a like a ratchet that and a hammer and it'll if it senses there's too much torque on the, the machine it'll hammer it right so it doesn't break your wrist that i have to say uh, I've, I've alluded to that uh black and uh, the wall the wall wall yellow yeah uh it was defective and mm -hmm. i latched onto it and it literally it, it actually rotated me 180 degrees yeah the clutch didn't engage yeah so it would just keep spinning yeah <laughs> well uh it, kind of a, a pointless story but when i was in the navy i took a uh it was like a three weeks tool safety school and the instructor talked about exactly this and then the next day he wasn't there and it's like oh he broke his wrist when he was screwing something in <laughs> at home and you know yeah. Right, using the screwdriver and so that, that's my story not exciting but uh i mean he talked about it the day before and then he goes home and, and you know yeah. you gotta be on it every minute here's an interesting little caveat to what dennis was talking about the um, the impact drive have you ever tried to take a, a cement drill or a concrete drill and just drill into concrete with uh, a regular drill motor like one of these it, it won't work it requires what's called a hammer drill. Mm -hmm. And that basically, it just hammers it back and forth. And it must be the the, curve, the, the rotating of the drill bit, and then it's just hammer. So it's going bam, 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 just going around the circle. Basically, that's what an impact drive is doing. Now, seeing we got this picture here, I just want to mention one thing about these tools real quick. The reason that I bought this test tool on uh, drill motor. Okay, well, it, it, it says it. Start oh, the video. Oh, oh okay. here we go. All right. Why did you buy this one? <laughs> I bought all the screws. It has a very sensitive torque setting. These are not as sensitive over here. The Milwaukee, I would shear off the number four screws the heads with the very lightest torque setting, that one there has much better torque control. Now, real quick, the caveat to the whole thing is that test tool drill motor right now is in the range of about three to $350. So if you're not going to require um, just if it's within your budget, those other drills like the Milwaukee and the DeWalt's and all the other ones are in the price range of maybe a hundred and some dollars. And they'll do 99% of what you want to do. But those little brass screws that I use on some of these uh, jewelry boxes are so delicate that um, one slight rotation of the torque setting, not disengaging, will strip off the head. Mm -hmm. So, that's why that's all I use that for is the very small screws. Put, putting, putting aside jewelry boxes, if there was one go to drill, should you all, should you prefer to take a, a higher voltage one to purchase a higher voltage or not? Well, that comes down to again our you know our original thing about this whole thing is where, where do you want to go with this? What do you do? If you're not going to make projects that require big, long, honking number 12, 14 screws, you don't need an 18 volt. You can get away with the one right in the background. The 12 volt versions now have plenty of power and they'll do. I would say I use the 12 volt one 60 to 70 percent in my shop. They, they've come a long way, and um, so um, it just depends on what you want to do. On some of the rocking chairs, I, I'm putting three and four inch wood screws into the rocking chairs and stuff. But it's just, what do you want to do? That's all. Now, it, what, yeah. uh, I'll, I'll, I'll interject that uh, I, we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit more at the end, but uh, yeah, the the uh, probably the best value are these Milwaukee 
uh, 18 bolts, you can mm -hmm. get a smaller one, drill driver impact, and then the big the big half inch. Uh, but I use the, I have two Festool uh, ones like this. I use one for a drill, I use one for uh, uh, or, or a screwdriver and one for doing the countersink. Uh, it is a luxury, I admit, but I like the, the form factor. They're about half the weight of the other ones. And if you're going to use this thing all day, which I do, not back when I work more, but I, I would use it all day and carry them. Uh, so I prefer the the 10 volt, 9 volt stuff because it will do 90% of what I want to do. But I also have the back of having the, the big 18 half inch killer drill motor and impact driver. The 90% of what I do, the, the 10 volt is just fine. May I interject? Yes. Also, my last two shops I was working in, we used rigid. They had rigid drills, and they're comparable to the Milwaukee that now owns rigid. So I think the next two I'm going to purchase will be the Milwaukee. I think that these this pair is a really good mid level where um, as long as the clutch doesn't go out and they're pretty reliable, yeah. you won't you won't blow up your little jewelry box. And if you're only going to get one set of drills, I think. Those are the ones to go with. If you have anything too delicate and you're worried your drill might blow it up, I also have a set of pan screwdrivers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got a lot more to cover. Like I said, this is a big topic. Okay, and it's going you'll to note, you'll notice the torque setting on here. There's a number four by half inch wood screw, brass plated wood screw there. It's on the one and a half torque or two. two. Actually. It's on two. Um, and uh, let me give you a little demonstration here of this is real world woodwork. This is what we do. And that is with a pilot hole. Are you guys going to go over what you do if you strip a screw? Do you have like you're going to show us how you guys get the oh, strip no. screw out. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry, what was that again? Ask that question at the end, Kenny. That, that was Kenny. Okay. 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 Can no. I say oh. something about the, the uh, drill motors? Uh, as far as when you purchase them, I find the better one to be the one with the ball bearings, not the one with the uh, plastic bearings, because they just don't last. I've gone through maybe right. four sets rather than one with the ball bearings. Uh-huh, I agree, yeah. Real quick about purchasing this stuff. Um, keep your eyes open for Black Friday, Father's Day sales, Christmas stuff. Uh, some of these Milwaukee, the 12 volt ones, you get the drill motor, two batteries, a charger, and the impact driver for $90. Yeah. So Super if you're looking for stuff, snoop around and find Home Depot, that's where I got my last ones at Home Depot. And you got to move and move fast on this stuff. Because sometimes it's a flash sale. It's only on there for like a day or two. So if you're a procrastinator, <laughs> so be it. Um, okay, we're at the drill press. And- uh, Oh, can I just ask yeah. one basic question? Quick, before you switch over. Uh, you know, you talk about torque, okay? So- I said to my husband, I go, what does this one and two mean? And he goes, torque. And then he walked away. Well, what, <laughs> I, I don't know what that means. What well, you... We're, we're going to, that, that's why we're having this meeting. The, I, I did have a, a, a video about what is the torque. The torque is simply, uh, mm -hmm. you saw Ed pointing at the, the drill motor. It was the one and then the right. dot and the three. That is a two, a, a torque setting of two. And that's the amount of, that limits the amount of twist that the drill will put into the screw. A, a two is nothing. Yeah. A two is you could probably take a screwdriver and with your, your hands and do it. Uh, a 10 is, you know, the torque that I was putting with those, driving those big screws are probably a hundred foot pounds of torque or the ability to twist. So in, in, yeah, which, why, is, which is why the higher settings will just break the break kind the screws. of screws because too much force for it. Yeah. So, 
So we want to limit that twisting force with the machine instead of having to do it mechanically by our own feel. So the torque setting is the key to uh, the, the fine woodworking. And this example that you saw before this, yeah. with, with the little number two screw, these machines are so powerful that they will shear any screw that you have if you don't, uh, if you torque it too much or if you spin it too much. I so you should people, like start on the light side and, and build yeah. up? Is, is yeah. that you? Yeah. I would say uh, the smaller the screw, the smaller the torque setting. Yeah. If for some reason it won't drive your screw and you've done everything, you've drilled your pilot hole and everything, always back the screw out, change the torque setting mm -hmm. one or two times and go back and redrill. Yeah. Don't try to change the torque setting and then continue drilling it in because the screw's already locked inside it. You've already locked. And so that's just a rule of thumb, uh, a good practice that um, you run the risk that if you've torqued it too much, now you've stripped the head off of a small screw. So, 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 so in a nutshell, torque is basically twisting force. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Also, when that's you're when that applied to drill. Open? Yes. When you're using these uh, big screws, uh, put wax on them. It makes oh. the screw so much easier to put in. Yeah, yeah wax, uh, soap, ivory. Yep. But um, Michelle, does, does it that help easier to come out? out? But Michelle, with uh, your question or your. Well, what about the one and two setting, though? You were talking about the one through 12. Okay, I get that now. Yeah, so but the one and two is like the, the slightest, tiniest amount yeah, of torque. Right. And then once it reaches that point, it'll uh, it it spin freely and uh, disengages the clutch. And that so, way you don't strip out the really tiny screws. So one has more torque and two goes faster. No, no, it's, it's no, not. it's the torque. It's just, just the, the torque. amount of force. Because on this one, they, there's a speed change. There's a speed also. Speed is separate. Yeah, the thing on the speed back. Is, is not relevant. Speed is separate from torque. Yeah, the speed is. It, it, it just the speed is just sometimes you want it to uh, cut faster on as a drill and there's two speeds so it, that really is not part of the conversation for, for the clutch so All right. Basically, yeah, you so that one and two means something now he was wrong it your husband that wasn't the clutch he was talking about that was the speed yeah that's oh. how my drill is too it's like first gear and third gear on a car. Oh, yeah. tell okay. your husband this is not the torque. This is the speed. <laughs> sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, like <laughs> you want to cut through stuff faster, it makes it a cleaner hole. But sometimes, if it's really thick, like going fast is just going to heat it up. So you want to slow down. Yeah. You know, right. I would think cutting like metal, you want to go slower than cutting wood. You know. Well, here's the solution to the whole problem. Carve out an hour of your time, go out, drill a bunch of holes, get a bunch of different uh, screws, a uh, different assortment, and sit there and drive them, and you will get the feel for what we're talking about. Sometimes it's a little maybe overwhelming about torque settings and screw sizes and all that. But start out with like a number four, or number six, number eight, and go up the line, and you'll you'll get the feel of it. You'll understand uh, that, ooh, a number 10, I got to kick it up to about an eight torque setting or you know so and the length of the screw the wood you're going in is more resistance uh, as it gets deeper and deeper there's more uh, surface area that it's uh, resisting. Yeah. all okay. right okay let's, let's let's go on to now this is we're back at ed shop and he's going to demo some of the other uh, bits yeah this is a plug cutter and We'll just kind of watch it here. He's cutting a plug for a hole. Now this is a um, this cuts a tapered plug. Some of them cut straight. Cut some of them. Now this this was done rather quickly. The the wood shouldn't vibrate like that. Uh, I've got T-tracks where I could clamp the wood down if you wanted to. And this is just a demonstration to remove the plug from the wood. I do it a little bit differently, yeah. but for quick and dirty purposes, we just and it pop, worked pop out. It out. <laughs> yeah. It landed right where it needed to go. Yeah. So this is a tapered plug. And 
that was one of the holes that I drilled with the um, uh, fuller uh, drill bits. And what I'm doing here is lining up the grain with the grain direction. Uh, and we're going to tap it in. It's tapered. And normally you would glue this in. Yeah. Normally you tap it on your workbench and not on your drill press. Yeah. <laughs> I knocked it out of alignment by doing this. But anyway. And after I sand that off, if you're looking for the appearance of the wood blending in so that you, it's not very noticeable, you can do that with the same kind of wood on the rocking chairs and some of the other furniture. I choose to use ebony, which is a nice contrasting wood. And uh, here's a demonstration of the Bormex uh, bit. <clears throat> forgot to turn the dust off. Yeah. Perfect. You'll see there's no edge chatter, there's no nothing. Uh, perfect one inch diameter hole. This is the demonstration with the uh, red point drill. And we did turn the dust off on here in a second. Let's see. But the bread point bit, a good set of bread point bits. Now, now we have a twist. And here's a twist, uh, just a standard half inch uh, drill bit. In a drill press, it works okay, but you in a hand, well, you'll see, we actually do it in handheld. Yeah. You do, yeah, it so, moves around on you. Um, you know, I have a complete set of just standard twist drills. And the beauty of it is, if I want a, tr a drill bit that's point 0.139, I have one with the now here's here's the same drill bit in handheld, and you can see, and I'm not doing that deliberately. Um, uh, you can see the difference in the depth. Yeah, this the is the one. This is the one here. Right here. That is the tear out and one the drill vibrate, and it's not a half an inch. It's a little bit of elliptical and all. Here's the um, the bread point drill, the half inch one, handheld, and you'll notice that a little bit better. A little bit better, but um, not nearly as not not hardly any tear out. A little bit of vibration, but um, a little bit of an elongated. Yeah, but yeah, you'll see it in a second here. The one thing about drilling a hole, a lot of times you better make sure you drill the right size hole because to go back and open it up, um, especially with a, a Forstner bit, you can't do it. Stop it in a sec. Keep, keep it going, Dave. Okay, stop it. Now, next time, if you guys want, we'll talk about you know the the drill bit or the, the screw sizes and heads mm -hmm. and all that. Go and start it and then stop it. And it, this is what I use exclusively is the Torx. Ed uses another uh, no, I, I, I use Torx but a different brand. Yeah. Okay. Now th th this is an this, this is kind of a, a postscript. It, it's a it's about a minute or so and hopefully it, it just that just play it and you'll see hopefully we won't lose too many people <laughs> a set of the uh, you know, what i guess we'll call this the postscript this is the set of the four countersinks that were we showed earlier and one of the problems that i've always had with this particular is the set screws loosen up and slide and it it uh, it, it is never, uh, I, I can't depend on them. And the smaller ones, Ed doesn't use the uh, the five very much, he said. But what Ed did, and I think it's, this, this is incredible, what he did, that's a piece of dowel that he drilled a hole in. Not only did he uh, use it to mark uh, the, the bid, but I'll, I'll let him talk about it. Talk about it, Ed. Well, I, okay. I, uh, Dennis basically, was, uh, I cut uh, a dowel a specific length to give me the um, the depth of the uh, drill that I wanted to put in the wood. This one happens to be a number ten, and with this piece of uh, wood with a hole drilled in it for the drill bit, um, is a certain length. And now this length right here is exactly an inch and a half. 
The problem is sometimes if the uh, set screws uh, loosen up, like Gal uh, Dennis said, the uh, countersink will slide up on the drill bit and you keep drilling into <laughs> your workpiece. This is a um, foolproof method of not going any deeper than an inch and a half deep um, into the wood. And so these are just half inch dowels with the specific uh, 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 diameter of the drill bit drilled in the middle and slipped on there and tightened down. Fantastic. So um, I made different sizes for all the different bits. This one here is a, a number 12 by an inch and a quarter. This is a number 10 by an inch and a half. And you can see the difference in the length of the uh, two bits by about a quarter of an inch. Have you talked to uh, Fuller about this? Yes, I mentioned it to him, but um, haven't, haven't seen him put these on the internet yet. But uh, I have a good friend that has a 3D printer. Maybe he'll want to print some of these up <laughs> and uh, we can uh, get these on the market because uh, I've never had one. Uh, um, uh, uh, miss drill or anything and the other good news is depending on the size of the screw you walk over and you pick up the right bit one and a half boom you don't have to adjust anything measure anything and uh, of course you need multiple bits if you want to have different lengths hey Ed, what did you do for a living i was a vice president of sales and customer service for 34 years yeah. at a manufacturing company <laughs> and that that concludes today's meeting or presentation yeah, that's okay. brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, can I weigh in with a question? Uh, okay. I have a Milwaukee drill and I use the Craig pocket hole system a lot. And it drives me crazy. I'll drill a pocket hole. And as I come out of the jig, my bit falls on the floor and breaks the point. And uh, I, I have yet to figure yeah. out what I'm doing wrong or what the, what the drill is doing. But it seems to, somebody suggested to me the deceleration, br the break on the drill is causing the chuck to come loose and in turn drop the bit. But it's a very expensive problem. And I wonder if you guys have experienced it or have any suggestions. Uh, just so everybody, is everybody familiar with the pocket joint? Pocket, that, that's this little guy right here. You can't see it. That's, that's the fixture, and there's the uh, very limited use in the in what I do. I did have one occasion where I built a, a very high dollar piece of uh, a cabinet for a, an architect, and he demanded certain things. And the only way I could accomplish it, one important connection was with a uh, a pocket screw. So my my uh, I uh, use these very limited, but uh, Ed, did you ever use these? Yeah, I've not... used them a lot. Okay, don't. I was introduced to these by um, one of our guests, Kenny. I was I was wondering if you remembered that. Yeah, and then I, I had to go buy my own. I actually have the same one. I haven't had it drop out of my drill, but I have. Well, that's some not exclusive that to a pocket like hold. I have my my drill bit will sometimes loosen up on me like. But very, very valid question. Do you have a now, Am I doing something wrong? Has anybody experienced this? I'm just I've experienced it. crazy. Yes, I have. Yeah. And the way I <laughs> counteracted it was uh, don't decrease the RPM on a drill when you extract it from your jig. And then you just you chuck it every time? Because that's what I've gotten. No, I, I didn't have to chuck it. I, I could drill 50 holes with my gun. It's either that or your chuck is uh, the jaws on the chuck they get worn and it won't hold the drill bit as tightly as uh, you know it would on a, a sharp uh, chuck. Ah, good point. Yeah, just, I, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe the chuck is worn out. Uh, no, no, Joe has a good answer here for everybody. As Ed was just pointing out, the difference, this is just round, so it's a little harder to grip. I think for the drill. Good. Yeah. As opposed to the octagon. Yeah, you could, the, yeah, maybe, uh, uh, maybe get a grinder and cut some slots or something in the, uh, uh, the, yeah. the, the bit here. So like you were saying, I just, I just tighten it tighter. Um, it really is mm -hmm. slick. 
I mean, but it really is well, a, what kind of a truck do you have? Do you have a key or do you have? Oh, uh, I've done Milwaukee. Yeah. Just that so of. it's just, you know, zip, you know, you tighten up. It's like we all do. Uh, that, that's... Maybe put some double stick tape around it. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> no. That way, when it gets loose, no. it won't drop. <laughs> you know, otherwise, I just love my Milwaukee. And I have a, I'm a limited Kool Aid drinker. You know, I have a little Festool, but. Uh, I'm thinking, do I have to buy a Festool drill to, to stop this problem? And I just, it drives me crazy. I, I'm well, glad to see you guys using the the, Festu, the uh, Milwaukee's. Why don't you, as an experiment, do you have a grinder? Yeah. You yeah, can, just put you can grind some flats yeah. onto that where it'll mirror pretty close to the chuck. See, what's happening with a chuck is it's really only making three-point contact. Okay. <laughs> It's only got three points that it's making contact. Yeah. If you put a flat on there, I guarantee you it will not spin. It can't spin. Yeah. But That's if the chuck is loosening up, like there's some part, something wrong that's making it go loose, it doesn't matter if it's gripping nice and tight, if it's going to just loosen up a half a turn every time he stops. Yeah. So I, if it's I, not spinning in there, it's, it's just dropping out completely. So. It's yeah, it, loosening up. I think try it, tightening. Yeah, there's tighter. something wrong with your chuck. It's either not tightening up uh, tight enough to hold the torque that you're applying to the drill bit, or um, you're just not tightening it up yourself. Is oh, like, sir, I tighten up, or you're not tightening it up. I trust me, I'm tightening it up because I mean, if you, 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 now I use. You know, on all you know, ninety percent of what I you know use this guy right here, and I'm looking at the chuck. This guy has three points on the as the chuck closes up. This guy has got six. It's got a little cutout of each of the. What's that? A ridge, rigid. So if they, if they Milwaukee. Yeah, the Milwaukee. It, it could simply be worn out, and it, it can't bite. The, how, the how long have you had the drill? Um. I don't know, seven, eight years, maybe. Yeah. Oh, Pardon? I have a... Uh... Yeah, because they offer a five-year warranty. But here's the thing about Milwaukee. I'll tell you a little cute story. I had a big uh, bell sander sitting on my bench about 20 years ago. The thing was like 15 years old. Accidentally, I had the trigger with the... It was set to go on. So I plugged it in, and it flew <laughs> off the workbench, went across the road, and I sent it to Milwaukee down here in Anaheim, California, where Disneyland is. And I said, please call me and let me know what the damages are. A week later, I come home from work and there's a box sitting on my front porch. It had a list of about 20 things and it said under warranty. <laughs> okay. They're really good about their stuff. If you think you've got a defective chuck, contact Milwaukee. Maybe they'll have to send it in, but they'll probably make it good. They really will. They're really good about that stuff. Okay, well, you guys are talking. I'm doing. Uh, you probably can't see. He's on a mission, Kevin. You, you wanna now? I've, I've. This is the probably the fourth time in my life that I've ever used a. Can you bring it over. No, uh, first it, that, a, that I've used a. That's in my little festival. And this, this is fine, but it did, did it just fine. So, well, I'm not I'm suggesting that my little bit over the table. My Milwaukee drills the hole just fine. It's when I pull the drill yeah. out of the wood and then drop it bit on the floor. There was a lot of force as I as I was pulling it back. The the sawdust really clamped up the. the <coughs> there was a lot of force. I mean, even right now, I mean, I I'm putting I'm pulling it here. Pull that out. Just just put a little pull out. Right? Yes, yeah, yeah. pretty tight. So. Uh, just you know, make sure that I don't know. I, okay, here's saying yeah, maybe try oh. keeping it spinning while you're pulling it out. I mean, that I'm sure All that's right. like too simple to be like the problem. But All right, so I'll give a follow up on this. Yeah, yeah. It, tell okay. us, you know, but that I mean, I, I gotta say that's pretty slick. I I, I don't mind that at all. You know? Okay. Do you I, have I, another I drill think, motor? Yeah, I, I think. I think Steve said um, the the way to do it is to uh, keep the uh, speed as you drill as you pull it out. Uh, don't don't slow it down. Keep keep it a regular continuous good speed to pull out. 
Yeah, let, let us, uh, Jay, let us know your follow up on that and if you figure out uh, anything on that. And if you guys could. Uh, another thing, you have another drill motor. Uh, I do have a, I have a, a AC powered rigid. Yeah, okay, and, great. Hey, great. That's perfect. Do yourself a favor. Take, make the, uh, we, at work, we always used to say cause and corrective action. Make the problem come and go. Use a different drill motor, put the bit, use the same wood, drill it the same way. And if it doesn't come out, you've eliminated all the variables of your problem. And now it's something with your chuck because the other drill didn't do with the same thing you did. Same, I, same everything. Do everything I, the same way. I accept the challenge. Other questions. Lots of questions. Not only that, if you're going to grind the flats on the, uh, the end of the drill bit, the three flats to match your chuck, make sure you grind them evenly because if you yeah. don't, the bit will wobble. And, and I, I think we need to go back to our disclaimer of advice like that is exactly, uh, yeah. you know, yeah, you'll screw it up. Yeah, really don't, yeah don't definitely, play with us for up, but, uh, definitely try the other drill before you grind your bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Make the problem come and go. Yeah. And you'll okay, so I have a, I, I do pocket holes quite a bit when I, when I build barn doors, I have a cheap AC powered black and Decker uh, drill motor that I use uh, just only for pocket holes and it uses a key not just the twist lock and i've never had a problem with uh, the drill bit falling out ever thank you so i mean yeah. it, it might might be the drill motor but i i don't know if it's the key you can just tighten it much tighter with the yeah, with the key. yeah like no the keys were totally the way back in the day is a weak link i mean it, you, a lot of times they'll you know not yeah. not quite lock up but. do your festival drills have headlights yeah Okay. Uh, oh, I got a question. Yo. Well, you know, first of all, Jay, um, you know, for all of you that weren't there Wednesday, fabulous presentation. Yeah. And you. Jay, my my drill thing falls out all the time too. So <laughs> I'm I'm just right there with you. Uh, though it can't be my fault, but it probably <laughs> is. Yeah. Okay, so my question is this. Um, when you are on the, um, uh, when you were doing the counter sink, now, do you go all the way into the connecting board or are you just going down enough to get the screw started? Okay. Actually, I think we're going to talk about that when we talk about the screws, but the reason this demonstration was to familiarize you know, uh, people with the machines. Um, now, next oh, okay. time we'll talk about what the appropriateness of what we, you know, of screws. But and it, isn't just the basic, your pilot hole should go all the way through the wood here at the same, so the screw doesn't split the wood, uh, which I think might be the question, you know, uh, uh, kind of where. Yeah, you, you do, you know, it, in actual use, your countersink will actually go into the other piece of wood that you're trying to okay. Excellent. Um, I mean, that, that's what this is all about. But again, we could stay here till yeah. seven, eight o'clock. Real quick. In, a, in honor of the spacers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I, that's why I put the little spacers on the fuller bits. Because if you're drilling into a piece of wood that, let's say, your, your mating pieces are an inch and a half total, I only want to go in about 75%. So go down an uh, inch and a quarter. And if that drill slips, it'll go right through out the back top. So and, yeah, yeah, you do want to drill into both. The, that's what they're designed. That's why they're tapered because they follow the pattern of the screw. Ed, Ed doesn't want to ruin his day. Yeah. Now, in in, okay. in honor of the 20th century, is there any benefit to a corded drill? Yes. You don't it's have to power. There is no battery. Yeah, no battery. There, there, there. Correct. Hey, uh, yeah. If you're not careful, you'll end up half a project done with no batteries, and that's worse than down the creek without a paddle. I, I got a, I got a 1962 Pontiac that you can drive cross country in a couple of months. Would you do it? <laughs> no. Uh, okay. Next, next time. Yeah, I made a, a. a joke about the uh, i always have enough clamps that you can't see it this is what i use for clamps okay this is it see the the screws 
I really don't think, and Ed and I, we <clears throat> kind of discuss oh. this. I don't think the screws add anything, any strength to a, a joint in fine woodworking. It has the opposite view. So the, I've made many pieces of furniture where I've put the screw in and it just as a clamp. I, I don't want it. I don't think it adds anything in, in the uh, strength. Ed has a, Ed, talk to me. Um, okay, I don't really have, you know, a quantitative answer like a big spreadsheet with all the dynamics. All I can say is a number 12 wood screw takes 75,000 pounds per square inch to break that screw. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've got like an arm of a rocking chair with opposing forces, I like to know that that screw is in there holding that arm to the back leg from pulling out uh, longitudinally, you might say. Yeah. So. Um, tension. Tension. Uh, all I can tell you is all the furniture that I've ever built, nothing's ever come apart. And so we, why change? And, and uh, I can no, say the no, same no. thing. Okay. Okay. Guru is only so, as strong uh, as the wood that you're putting it into. I, I'm sorry, what was that again? A screw is only as strong as the wood you're putting it into. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the fail point is the wood, not the screw. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it might be kind of fun. You know, that, I mean, that's I, 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 I've actually done some experiments long, long ago about it, you know uh, the uh, uh, pull, uh, the, the the resistance to pull uh -huh. from, from a screw and all that kind of stuff. Nails in construction. I've you know we used to yeah. obviously if you pound a nail in and pull on it, it's going to come right out. Right. Screws are almost as bad. So uh, I disagree. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> here's the deal. If you want to use a screw, use a screw. If you don't yeah. want to use a screw, and if you use, use a screw, do it correctly. Right. Okay. Right. Because exactly. you don't want to have the screw loose. So we, we, we have lots of those. <laughs> so, yeah, we already got enough loose so, screws, right? So we could have a full discussion on this subject. I think the tight bond data is pretty explicit and, and uh, pretty unrefutable. If you do a good joiner uh, and put edge grain together with some tight bond at, uh, I think it's one thousandth of an inch thickness, yep. you will break the board before you'll break the glue there's, joint. There's, mm -hmm. the, Anybody the dispute that? Concluded that that is true. It and that's without, a, that's without a dowel, that's without a, uh, a domino, that's without a freaking screw. And uh, in any way, shape, or form. So it's really good woodworking to start with. Right. And we then, have a, good, and then a, glue, a good adhesive and then good clamping uh, while the product is glue is drying. So, but I think there is something important to talk about. And we could make a whole talk about this, particularly in uh, things that are stress joints. You know, there's different kinds of joints. We all know that. And if we're building a table with legs and spanners and things, there's different kinds of stresses involved. And I think there's a good argument for screws. Uh, as a clamp. And sometimes you need to take things apart. That's always a good argument for a screw. Yeah, that, it, it gets away from the fine furniture uh, uh, element that, that I'm kind of referring to. But uh, hey, I, I have 90. It's a Puritan thing. You got it. 90% of everything in my shop is screwed together. I could take this whole thing apart with, with a screw gun. So I'm from Michigan where all the Amish are, a good portion of the Amish are, and they use no screws. And they put up big barns that stand for a hundred years with no wobble. And they do amazing things with tenons and pegs. And, and uh, if you ever want to see their, their, their uh, mastery, come to, come to Michigan. Why don't you go uh, take your, do a little video for us? Well, you know, when I was working here uh, I, as a surgeon, I had a lot of Amish patients, and uh, they were amazing. Uh, I just always loved my Amish patients. Uh, we, we had a we had a little discussion uh, Saturday. I have a couple guys come over, and we're talking it's a similar subject, and uh, we're talking about in grain and and all that. Uh, and I'm gonna I think I'm gonna leave it my end of it here. The structure of wood is made of 
cellulose and lignum, right? Everybody knows that? I do now. <laughs> <laughs> lignum is the glue that holds the cellulose strands together, the, the xylem and the phloem from your junior okay. high school. So uh, that is where the structure of wood lies and you have to play within their limits. Um, we'll, we'll talk about it more. Yep. All right. Well, everyone, uh, thank you for showing up oh, wait, today. Wait, wait, oh, wait, 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 sorry. One that more quick question. <laughs> we need some input from you guys on what you want presentations about. We're, you know, we can't every week dream up a subject that's going to address our audience. So tell Kevin, hey, I'd like a demonstration on bandsaw tune up or something. I, whatever you want to hear. Okay. So put on your thinking cap. But next week, this is continued, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, it was to, really you, good, you guys. You want to follow up with the, the screw, dis yeah. screw discussion? Yeah, so it's just mm -hmm. so fresh. Fasteners. Okay, okay. Fastener. what, what, one, su fasteners. one suggestion I have for you, if um, 